Hello, it's Aga from Marvis Artist. Today we're talking mistakes, things to improve while working on visualizations. Now, this episode is targeted more towards beginners, people who just started their journey, but I'm sure that even if you are a pro, you might find some useful tips here. Obviously, if we start something new, for example a hobby or a new job, it's more likely that we are not great at the beginning. Here, for example, is my first visualization. Please, stop laugh. Not great, right? But that's okay, because learning is a process and we all have to start with something. It may be hard, especially at the beginning when there is so much information out there that makes you overwhelmed and you don't know where to start. But let me help you and point out a few things that you can improve and that can help you jump to the next level. A lot of beginners don't pay enough attention to the scale of the texture they use. Let me show you the example. So here we have the sofa texture mapped correctly. I found the fabric sofa online to compare. So it's more or less similar. It could be a bit smaller in our example if you want it similar to the one from my online searching. Let's say something like this. But basically, it's not a really huge difference and in both cases it looks natural. But if the texture on the sofa looks like this, it's totally out of scale. And this is where your image will start to look off. And you need to practice if you want to be able to see what is wrong. So the best way to do this is to look for correct dimensions online and observe the materials around. If you want to know more on how to correctly map the textures, watch my previous video about UVW map modifier. I put the link in the corner. If you are not familiar with the tiling term, let me quickly explain. Let's take a look. I've prepared the two different textures here. So at the left hand side, you can easily see the repetitions and divisions between the maps. While at the right hand side, it's not obvious. Unless we turn off the visibility of the maps, it's hard to tell where the connection is. It happens because the map merges into one another. So if we have this line here, we have the continuation on the one next to it. And the same here, which is basically another side of the map. We call this sort of map seamless textures. You don't always need a seamless texture, but if you are doing a large surface, it's more likely that you will need one. To create photorealistic visualizations, we have to think about the scale of the models we use in the scene. Otherwise, we can get pretty weird results. But don't worry, I have a great tip for you. There is this magic thing that can help you out. ta -da! The tape. Why it's so magic? First of all, it's pretty small, so you can always have this with you. Secondly, you can measure everything around you. The goal here is that after a while, you won't need this tape anymore, because you will be able to look at something and guess roughly the size. In this case, you're practicing your visual understanding of the space. Other than that, you can always check the dimensions online. That's the beauty of our modern world. So easy. You don't know what the standard height of kitchen cabinet is? Let's ask Google what he thinks. Here we go. Plenty of examples. You're not sure what the standard dimensions of the chairs are? Not a problem. The answer in a few seconds. If you need to know dimensions of something specific, you can look for the details on the manufacturer's website. And here we go. I highly recommend you to check out dimensions a lot at the beginning. I know it can be annoying, but believe me, it will help you. Sky is too dark or too bright, or a color is off. 
It's hard to catch at the beginning, but let me show you the example, it may be easier to understand. I have the example of visualization with the sky replaced. This is how it looks without any adjustments. The sky is way too dark, and the color doesn't match the render. If you take a look at this tree, it's super visible, as the light and reflections on the tree is much brighter. The same if we take a look at the reflections. The color is totally different. So in this case, first I adjusted the color and saturation, and then the brightness of the sky. So we can see how different the result is. I advise you to have the references, the look you're going for. Our eyes get used to the images we work on pretty well, and after a while it's getting harder and harder to see what is wrong. While when you have the reference, it's much easier to fix the issue as we have the comparison. Post-production can take your images to the next level. However, you should think about this more like finishing your apartment, not as patching the holes. You should try to get a high-quality image first in the 3D software, then add this extra touch in post. Using post-production as a way of fixing mistakes from 3D software doesn't lead you in the right direction. By the way, if you want to know my process of post-production images, check out the video where I show this. I put the link in the corner. In the real world, nothing is perfect. You rarely see perfectly organized room or two identical apples and so on. And this is one of the most common mistakes I see and I did it as well. But there is an easy way to fix it. Let me show you one example what you can do. You can see that now I have all chairs set perfectly and in the same distance from each other. The same with the table set. You can always move or rotate a few things around. It shouldn't look messy, it's just adding a bit of imperfection and randomization. We can do the same with the table set. Just move and rotate something slightly. This is the last thing I want to discuss. Patience and practice makes magic happen. There are no shortcuts. Of course, you can choose faster or slower way of learning, however, without these two things, you won't get much anyway. At the beginning, I sometimes repeated creating the same scene a couple of times, just to practice and get better. And still, every day I feel that I'm improving my skills. I know how it is at the beginning. I know the feeling when you don't know where to start, what is important or what to do next. And this is why we decided to create the training for beginners. During the course you will learn 3ds Max basics, camera setup, lighting setup, creating a photorealistic materials, modeling and post-production. Additionally, we teach you the way of thinking of creating visualizations that will help you to kickstart your career. The course is available in Corona and Viray. Click here to check it out on our website. Bye bye!